off. For more, let's welcome in member of the House Oversight Committee, Kentucky Congressman James Comer. Congressman, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Rob. Um, I'm wondering what your take was on this first round of sanctions from the White House yesterday. Uh, did the president go far enough? Uh, could more have been done preemptively? Well, I think more could have been done. And you have to remember, Joe Biden has talked a tough game for a long time. Ever since we knew that Putin was uh, having his military buildup on the Ukrainian border, uh, he's threatened him with swift sanctions, swift American response. Well, Putin goes ahead and, and starts his uh, journey inside Ukraine, and Biden just uh, has a little uh, a minor um, sanctions. And you have to look. This is a reason. Uh, the reason for this is twofold. Number one, Joe Biden's failed energy policies. And number two, Joe Biden's failed uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan. Putin knows that the United States uh, is at a competitive disadvantage because energy prices are going to go the, through the roof. These sanctions are, are going to hurt Americans as well. They're also going to hurt uh, Putin's enemies, the oligarchs, who he feels are gaining too much wealth and too much power in Russia. Putin's numbers in Russia uh, aren't good. So this is good for Putin. And I don't think that Joe Biden uh, had a plan from day one. And certainly to make these bold threats and then come out with, with minor sanctions is another uh, act of uh, failure from the Biden administration. Yeah, very on brand for the Biden administration. I think that he, the president, has telegraphed weakness to Vladimir Putin for the entire time he's been in office. And that was yeah. just reinforced yesterday uh, at the White House. J.P. Morgan, RSM, says that inflation could hit 10%. In the next 60 days, uh, oil prices yesterday closing at just over $97 a barrel. Um, we could see gas prices up six, seven dollars a gallon in the not so distant future. So this, what's happening in Eastern Europe, affects all of us here back home, and, it, and it's going to those. That's going to start to happen real soon, isn't it? It is, and Putin knew this. This is something that Vladimir Putin's thought about for a long time, uh, ever since Joe Biden got elected. And on day one, remember, he canceled the Keystone Pipeline. He banned drilling in federal lands. Uh, Vladimir Putin knew that this would have an impact on energy prices in the United States. Everyone knows how important the price of oil is to our overall economy in America. We're very dependent on oil. Unfortunately, uh, we used to be energy independent in the United States when Donald Trump was president. Automatically, uh, as a result of, of Biden's increased regulations, his Keystone Pipeline, his ban on federal uh, lands for, for drilling. Uh, this has had an impact on energy. Putin knew this. He knew that the United States would respond with sanctions. These sanctions probably are going to hurt Americans just as much, if not more, than Russians. Vladimir Putin knew this. This continues to uh, give him an advantage over the United States in his quest to uh, take over Ukraine. Yeah, that's a good point. Former Energy Secretary Rick Perry uh, said a day ago that power is always going to hinge on energy and who has it. Um, fine, we shut down Nord Stream 2. Nord Stream 1, uh, that's the pipeline that runs from Russia down under the Baltic Sea right into Germany. That's up and running. That provides 35% of the oil and natural gas to Germany and other major European countries. So um, Putin has got Europe and the U.S. over the barrel right now, and he knows it. He knows it. And what I would like to see is more concern from Europe. Uh, I know uh, France has brokered a, a meeting with Putin, a phone call with Putin. That's not enough. No. You know, the United States can't continue to be the policeman for the world. I wish that the Biden administration showed as much concern for our southern border, but I know we're talking about Ukraine right now. Uh, this is not something like what President Bush did when he got all of our allies together and there was shared pain in trying to defeat Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Right now, it looks like the United States is on its own. Putin knows he has uh, Europe in a, in a disadvantage because of natural gas prices. He knows that this is going to create more inflation in the United States, these sanctions. So, you know, from Putin's standpoint, he, he's winning this war right now. What do we need to do now? What does the administration need to do to kind of, I hate to say it, but just kind of minimize the damage for the American people uh, at this point? It's already gotten out of hand. The administration has allowed it to get to this point. What, what should the Biden administration, what do they need to do next? Joe Biden needs to completely reverse course with his energy policy. He needs to go back to the Trump energy policy. We need to drill. We need to be energy independent. We need, we have the ability to be energy independent in the United States. We have the ability to export energy in the United States. 
But we can't do it with the sanctions, with the uh, regulations that Joe Biden's put in place. We can't do it uh, shutting down the Keystone Pipeline. We must be able to drill on our federal lands. There's so much we could do in the United States that Joe Biden has stopped. We were going in the right direction in energy. But Joe Biden wanted to please his uh, liberal, socialist, woke base. And on day one, he starts putting in these Green New policies. They're not going to work. They're going to yeah. create massive inflation. And with what's going on in Ukraine now, it's only going to get worse. And it just seems like we're dealing with a, a far different 69-year-old Vladimir Putin than we were dealing with under uh, President Trump for four years. Uh, something has changed. Congressman James Comer, great having you on. We appreciate the insight. Good to see you. Thanks for having me.